That's probably like my happiest time out of any day. If I get a chance to get on stage in front of people. I've been so many places in my life and time. Good, y'all. It's me, Jay Holiday, and this is who I am. Life for me growing up, well, one, I'm a PK. Uh, don't nobody know what that means. That means you're a preacher's kid. My mom was a preacher. Uh, my dad knew the Bible, front was and backwards. So I grew up in a strict household, you know, very structured. My dad was in the Air Force. Mom was a preacher, so I kind of had that real structured environment, but I wanted to go dibble and dabble in the street. So for me, I don't know, it was, it was cool. But then my dad died and had he never passed away, I wouldn't be doing this interview right now. I wouldn't even be Jay Holiday. So that was a part of my plan. The most important lesson my mom taught me was probably don't praise money. You know, money isn't everything. Uh, that, yeah, that had to be the best lesson. I mean, and because it, it, it kind of helped me within my career. If I was money hungry, I would have made a lot different decisions and I would be a lot further along, so people think. But really, that's a money decision, you know what I mean? Do you want more money or do you want to keep your dignity and your respect? So for me, I chose dignity and respect versus the money because of her saying never praise money. I just remember like the stories that I've told in the past about my cousin and stuff, just um, being a kid and they're like, oh yeah, my cousin can sing. And I guess at the age that I was, would be like uh, America's Got Talent Juniors. Like I could have done that as a kid, but I, me, I didn't see that. You know, all I saw was my cousins think I'm cool. My older cousins think I'm cool. I want to hang with my cousins. But then when I knew that I wanted to do it, same story, 14, Miss Anderson, she made me sing in this, uh, in this Black History Month show. And I had to sing my funny Valentine. My funny Valentine, sweet comic Valentine. You make me smile with my heart. Man, to finally get the first album, I was good. Um, once I got signed, I, I, I didn't really care about anything else. Cause at that point of getting signed, you don't even realize you may never drop an album. <laughs> like you just might not get there. So for me, I thought that was it, I'm on. And that's just not what it was. Uh, I got signed in 2005. So imagine 2005 to 2007 when Bad came out. 2005, I got signed, started working on my album, finished my album. The only two songs that I did not have was Suffocate and Bed, which Suffocate was already recorded. Uh, I did a reference for Dream for um, Omarion at the time. Um, they didn't take the record, Dream kept the record. So then I traveled around from 2006 to late 2006 with Be With Me, which was the first song that I did, first video. Then we went back, snatched Suffocate from Dream. Two weeks later, he he uh, he sent us bed, man, and I recorded it the same night he sent it to us. And uh, I was kind of forced to record it that night, which I'm glad they forced me, because it was kind of like, if you don't record it tonight, Chris Brown's gonna buy this record. So basically it was like, don't give him enough time to buy the record. The, the Chris Brown brief came from, from the bed thing. That was never a beef, that was just kind of, things hit the wire and everybody decided to say whatever their story was. Uh, Dream, me and Dream never beefed. We just knew 
mutual people and you know when you when you're a loyal friend you know what I mean he was a loyal friend to somebody that I did have beef with and that's just kind of how that kind of clashed and um but the Trey I, don't, I ain't gonna say nothing about him that's still ongoing it is what it is and he know what it is that's why he don't say my name and that's real because I know all his business everything he better not say nothing but anywho so um but Chris not nah, Chris man we good like I I think Chris and me are probably the two people that people should look forward to as far as the light skin brand of urban music. And I'll keep it at that. For me, I always wanted to be able to say, why can't I do soul music about the hood? That's where Back of My Lack came from. You know, then everybody's like, oh, you too hard for the, th this is hence the cleanup in round two. Or I would have stayed hood, but I listened to Capital and it, it failed. And then they tried to blame me for the fail. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I listened to you. I paid for my own photo shoot in the Dominican Republic because my label didn't want to pay for it. So basically, we just started clashing. And they thought that I was a Devo. That I was, oh, he's he made it. He think he can say this. He think he can do this. No. I care about my talent. <laughs> and they just didn't understand it and they just didn't realize that this isn't the end for me as far as capital or music, money. Take it back to moms, don't praise money. If you praise money, then you chase the money. So that helped me to make the best decisions for my, you know, basically for my career. And then after that, they, they basically messed me up on round two and it came time for them to release my third album. They didn't want to. So I said, you gotta either let me go or put my next album out and give me my advantage check. They didn't want to do that. So they had to let me go free and clear. If I did not have the mother that I have, a lot of artists would have been smacked. A lot of label heads would have been smacked. A lot of rappers would have been smacked. Honestly, and this is me honestly speaking, if I did not have the mother that I had that told me you are bigger than this and you're gonna do better, I'd have snapped on a lot of people because it's not about the money for me. It's about the passion, man. I love music, man. I, I grew up listening to Donny Hathaway, Marvin Gaye, D'Angelo, Sam Cooke, Jodeci, and um, Tupac, of course. Tupac is my favorite rapper, but it's about the passion, man. If you listen to everybody that I just named, all passion artists. Baby girl, it's killing me, yeah When you try to act like you don't Like you don't see, but I see, yeah You should be a me It's your heart You better say Before you give it to someone else Someone Cause it First of all, I have two daughters. Um, I have one that's going to middle school and one that's starting elementary school. So kindergarten and sixth grade, man. Um, boy. Not that I have anything against Beyonce, but my daughter dances, she does ballet. You know what I'm saying? She looks up to those type of artists. When you start talk, talking about a certain thing, my, my 10 year old daughter can no longer listen to you, period. I don't care who you married to, what kind of awards you got. My daughter ain't with the watermelon. You understand what I'm saying? That's not cool for me. So it's hard, man, because it's like you, as an artist, anything that I say against another artist is gonna make me look like I'm hating. I'm not hating. I just want you to understand that we all have our own opinions of how this thing should be done. You know, and um, for my daughters, I just, I don't trust some of the artists, the female artists that they look up to right now. Like as far as male artists, they don't listen to none of that other than me. And I even don't let them listen to some of the stuff that I have. You know what I mean? Or they gotta get clean versions or whatever. Um, but that has to stop being the excuse of why we can do whatever kind of song we want because there's clean versions. Because kids know how to fill in the words. You understand what I'm saying? I know this because I used to fill in the words, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard, man. Um, I'm scared. Jay Holiday should have either chosen love or music. Like, it's hard because 
I always get the flat. I always, 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 always. Every relationship is hard. But you need understanding. You need know how. Like if, let's just say some random event happens and I lose my voice. I need you to be able to pick up the reins and let's keep going. If you can't do that, then we have nothing to offer each other. You know what I mean? Because I know I can stay at home. If I can't sing, I can stay at home and make sure the house good. But if you can't get out there and go work, when I can't go work, man, what are we offering each other? You know what I mean? So at this point, man, it's just uh, the know-how, man, and uh, understanding. You gotta have a grind, man. My mom, man, she did it. She made it happen, so. Without my dad, so I don't know. Honestly, and this is from one artist to the rest of the artists, we are being hook singers and fillers right now as R&B artists. We started the love making process of this whole urban music. And now we're hook singers and ad lib fillers. Like if we either start charging top dollar to every hip hop artist or just start saying no, oh, it'll change. Cause then they'll have to go back to the samples and you see where that went. Everybody kept using them, got tired, then they had to start getting the artists. But that's because artists, remember how all the athletes wanted to be like the artists? Now, all of the R&B guys want to be like the rappers. So we just have to start standing our ground as, as R&B artists, man. Like, I don't know if you saw the, the letter that Tank wrote, which is something that I wanted to say for so long, but it had to come from him because if I say it, it's like, oh, Dude, you ain't done nothing since bed. Black people stuff. White people don't say that to me. White people like, hey, what's up, that? I'm gonna take a picture. Da, 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 da. Oh my God, I love you. But something that black people have to stop doing is stop tearing each other down, yo. You understand what I'm saying? Like, country music don't go through this. The reason why they keep shifting everybody in and out on the voice, black, is because we're not consistent. You understand what I'm saying? Why is that? We don't even ask ourselves that question. And that's sad, man. That's sad because we just put it all on the music. And I just feel like it should be better than that. It, sh it should definitely just be better than that. <laughs> First and foremost, Dre can't sing, period, point blank. He's a great writer, just like Dream can't sing, period, point blank. Great writer, wrote my two number one hits, but Dream know I eat him up on stage, period. So when the Grammys start changing their awards for these kind of awards, now you're downplaying the hard work that the NDIREs put in, that the Jill Scotts put in, that the D'Angelo's put in, that the R. Kelly's put in, that the Kim's put in, the Maxwell's put in, the Frankie Beverly and Mays put in. And I'm just naming people that I know y'all like. You're discrediting them by saying this guy can sing. He is not an R&B singer. The point is, is there are so many other people to look at that don't get credit because they're not out here gang banging, talking about bitches, hoes, drinking, drugs, and cars, and clothes. Like, what else we gonna talk about? Niggas don't talk about reading no more. They talk about Nas and Tupac. Oh, y'all would talk spit knowledge. Ain't no knowledge being spit right now. Who spit knowledge? Knowledge on how to get bitches. Knowledge on how to get a bottle. Look good in the club. But Carter Drive, guess what? My daughter won't be fucking with you. Period.
TV. The best black TV right now is what? What, bitch? Oh, you ain't got nothing on me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what up? Uh? You know what I'm saying? Versus if Martin used to come out and be like, uh oh. Jerome in the house. Everybody know that. That's when it was funny. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows the theme song to Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you know the theme song to uh, what's uh, Tyler, any Tyler Perry show? Any one of them. He don't care about us. Y'all got a black channel. But I can't say go make a gay channel. Mm. Then I'm homophobic. Because they asked me to be Jamal. I turned it down. Let's be real about all of that. Jamal wouldn't have been Jamal had I said, you know what, I have more dignity than that. Let me shut that down. I don't want to be Jamal because I have daughters and I don't want to explain to them, daddy needed the money that bad?